Donald Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden comes days after his own former chief of staff went on record to describe his former boss as a fascist. But that jamboree happening right now, you see it there on your screen, in that place is particularly chilling because in 1939, more than 20,000 supporters of a different fascist leader, Adolf Hitler, packed the garden for a so-called pro-America rally, a rally where speakers voiced anti-Semitic rhetoric from a stage draped with Nazi banners. When a Jewish protester rushed the stage, the Associated Press reported, quote, instantly, a dozen or more stormtroopers set upon him, knocking him down and beating him as he held his head in his arms. Most of his clothing was torn from his body. Later, he was booked for disorderly conduct. Now, against that backdrop of history, Donald Trump, the man who has threatened to use the military against opponents he calls enemies from within, who has threatened to use, use the troops to quell what he says are lawless cities, and to use those troops to carry out mass deportations of immigrants is once again turning Madison Square Garden into a staging ground for extremism. Joining me now, Ruth ben Ghiat, history professor at New York University and author of Strong Men, Mussolini to the Present. And Anne Applebaum, Pulitzer Prize winning historian, staff writer at The Atlantic and author of Autocracy, Inc., The Dictators Who Want to Run the World. I... I I cannot wait to have this conversation with both of you. And Ruth, thank you both very much for being here. Um, Ruth, since you are not at the table, let me start with you and just get you, talk to us about the parallels that we're seeing between 1939, that rally at Madison Square, Square Garden, and the rally we're seeing right now at Madison Square Garden, and the rhetoric that's already coming out of this rally. Yeah, of course, this is not a casual choice uh, to have it there. And although uh, Donald Trump objects strenuously to people comparing him to Hitler, he is the one who has gone out of his way to use Nazi rhetoric, talking about polluting our blood, uh, calling people vermin, even releasing a campaign ad that uh, says he's going to create a unified Reich in America. And, of course, as General Kelly said, uh, as, complaining that, you know, generals should be obeying him like Hitler's generals obeyed the Fuhrer. So this is not uh, at all casual. I want to make a comment about the, what Von Hilliard was talking about. You know, Trump has been using his rallies since 2015 to uh, radicalize people, to incite violence, to change, to kind of loosen people's inhibitions against violence. And all of the racist uh, stereotypes against Latinos and blacks and misogynist stereotypes and all of the vulgarity and the crudeness is designed to uh, help people lose their inhibitions and their taboos against uh, inciting, you know, against committing violence if the leader asks them to. And, you know, Anne, you write exactly this point. Um, in your latest piece in, in The Atlantic, why does, why does Trump sound like Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini? And you walk us through what Mussolini used to say, what, what Stalin used to say, what Hitler used to say. And then you bring up things that Donald Trump has said, including they're poisoning the blood of our country, they're destroying the blood of our country, bad genes, they're not humans, they're animals, cold-blooded killers, the enemy from within, sick, radical left lunatics. And you say he knows exactly what he's doing when he does this. So a couple of points to make about it. One is this isn't language that's been part of mainstream American politics before. I actually, when I was writing that article, I went back and looked at a few other eras in the last century to see if I could find anybody talking about vermin or poisoning the blood or comparing political enemies to insects. Uh, and I couldn't find it. I mean, even George Wallace's horrific racist speech that he made in 1963, where he's segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. He doesn't use that kind of language. This is language that is deliberately being imported and used knowingly uh, by, by Trump and by, and by others around him, including at this, at this rally. It's also interesting that it, normally at this point in a campaign, a, a candidate would be going to the center I mean, they would, he would be looking for, court, you know, swing voters, for, uh, you know, people in the middle, you know, people who are trying to make up their minds. But it looks to me, uh, and this echoes a little bit what Ruth just said, that what Trump is trying to do is radicalize people who don't usually vote, 
uh, to reach a, you know, some kind of, um, you know, latent, angry, uh, you know, maybe racist, maybe maybe violent segment of society that doesn't usually turn out for elections. And that's my, that would just be my guess as to what he's doing. Because this, and particularly this rally, is a is a, using a kind of extremism that we're not used to in, certainly the, in the last two weeks of U.S. Of presidential campaign. Um, you know, Ruth, to, An, to Anne's point, you know, he's using this rhetoric to, to get these folks, to get them out to vote. I just wonder... Is he also doing this to get them to go the, the next step? And that is to, I don't know, to incite violence, to have them do violence if he doesn't win. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, he does need them to vote. But uh, as we well know from all the GOP senators and congressmen who refuse to uh, commit to accepting the results of a free and fair election, the GOP is now an autocratic party uh, for the most part that is dependent on election denial, the big lie that they still won't uh, refute Trump, mm -hmm. you know, idea that and he Ruth, won the 2020 election. Ruth, let me, yeah. let me stop you there for one second, because just taking the stage right now is someone who fosters that notion that Donald Trump um, didn't lose the 2020 election. His vice presidential uh, running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, who is now taking, taking the podium, not sure we're going to take this, but Ruth, finish, finish, your, finish your response. Yeah, that... Um that and now I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ruth. It's, it's okay. get, get your train of thought back, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come to Anne. Anne, if you want to pick up on on what Ruth was talking about. In fact, let me read something you wrote also in this Atlantic piece that actually mentions Ruth. Um, there was a rally that Trump did where he stood in front of a, 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 a huge slogan, Trump was right about everything. And you write, this is the language, this is language borrowed directly from Benito Mussolini, the Italian fascist. Soon after the rally, the scholar Ruth ben Ghiat posted a photograph of a building in Mussolini's Italy displaying his slogan, Mussolini is always right. So this indicates to me that people around Trump are deliberately echoing this language, that this is part of their game, uh, that for, for whatever reasons, whether it's to get out the vote uh, or whether it's to prepare people to commit acts of violence after they lose the election, I don't know, but they do know what they're doing. They're, they're, they're not making accidental allusions to the 1930s. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, do, you, you don't do that by accident or by mistake. Right, and, and Bruce, I'm just wondering, to, to Anne's point, I mean, we've never seen this before in American politics. We've never heard this language from the top levels of American politics. I'm just wondering, can we as a nation pull back from the brink that we're hanging off of? Uh, we can certainly hope so that this uh, exacerbation of extremism um, will uh, wake people up, those who still think it can't happen here, um, and get them to see uh, the GOP and Donald Trump as in, in the, an authoritarian frame, uh, whatever that means to them, because this is a party that has exited democracy. It no longer believes in the norms and practices and values of democracy, which is why January 6 happened and why the GOP uh, passed a resolution in 2022 that said that January 6 was, quote, legitimate political discourse. Mm -hmm. They now think that violence is a legitimate way to solve political problems. And that's what Trump has been doing at his rallies, trying to get people to see violence and racism and misogyny as legitimate political discourse. So I'm hoping that uh, this overt Nazi parallels that they are cultivating and this extreme, extreme extremism will uh, wake people up and get them to see that it's not just going to be mm -hmm. immigrants. It's going to be a very wide range of targets, as you see from the other speeches. They right. targeted many, many Americans. And I'm hoping people will see the danger.